Hey, what's going on folks? My name is Chris and in this video I'm going to go over my very first cryptocurrency trade, official trade on the Dogecoin market, the Dog E coin, because that's what it stands for, Dog E as in Dog Elon, because it's basically Elon's coin at this point. Um, it was a short trade on April 21st and it worked out pretty nicely. And I want to just go over the trade, go over the market context with you, um, show you some clips of the recording in the moment when I was placing the trades. And I placed some of the orders on my phone, so you won't be able to see them, but you'll be able to see when the orders were placed and you'll hear the sounds and all that and all the timestamps. And I'm going to show you everything about, you know, what I was thinking, what I was going through uh, when I was deciding to place this trade. So this trade took place on April 21st and let's get to it. Before we get started, I just want to let you know that my name is Chris. This is Virillo Trading. And if you do want to support this content, you just have to click on the first link in the description and check out my stock broker interactive brokers i do trade stocks and futures however i'm getting more into the crypto stuff lately guys so we'll see what's happening before we get started i want to show you a time and sales window that i made yesterday in about six hours the reason i made this is because the kucoin exchange has a web socket uh, connection well i made a web socket connection to kucoin and um I noticed that the data coming in from the web socket is about half a second faster than on their website so there's my time and sales window. It's still a work in progress, obviously, but these are live uh, trades going through on KuCoin here on Bitcoin. And uh, you can see they have timestamps there and everything. And, um, you know, it's a work in progress, but uh, let's just say it's pretty cool to make your own time and sales window. <laughs> okay, so here I'm looking at KuCoin. And uh, honestly, I don't recommend trading on any particular exchanges. This is not a video to recommend trading of any type. Uh, you guys have to understand trading is full of risk all the time and it's about risk management. So um, now that you understand that, let's get on with this. So these are the trade executions from April 21st. And uh, what you're gonna see here is a bunch of sell orders. So this was my initial entry into the trade and it was at um, 3.05 Eastern time PM. So uh, in the afternoon. Um, and we were selling some Doge here in the market. So what I did was I went and I borrowed some Dogecoin on the open borrowing market on KuCoin. Um, basically, you can go ahead and borrow cryptocurrencies. You can borrow any cryptocurrency that they have, like US dollar Tether or uh, Doge in this case. So I went and borrowed about 40,000 of it. And then I went and I sold it in the market. Now, obviously, I waited before selling it. So we'll, we'll get to that. But you can see this is the initial trade execution of the entry here. So I sold it at an average price of... Um, 81 and 33 so 8 cents and then 133 ticks and then you can see the first cover is over here at 78 and 65 so I don't know how many ticks that is but it was more than I don't know probably about 200 300 maybe 300 ticks of a profit on that initial exit right there and then the final exit was done right here basically it's 7 cents and 71 ticks or 771 um, I'm also going to give you guys a few pointers on how I measure the risk in the Dogecoin market in this video and in the crypto in general. I know you guys, some of you guys watched that other video we did on scalping and if it's worth it for this trade. It was not a scalp, first of all. It's more of a position trade um, and I was willing to hold it overnight if it if everything was playing it well, but it actually ended up playing out in the same day. Basically, I was trading for about 40 cents a tick, okay? So what we'll do is we'll go over to Sierra chart. The good thing about Sierra chart is they have the Dogecoin Binance data. So the data from the Binance exchange um, and the futures market, crypto futures trade a lot of volume on Binance. Uh, I don't know if you guys have checked it out, but I would recommend it. I've seen Dogecoin doing more volume than ES on the stock market close at like one, two in the morning sometimes. Okay, don't ask why I stay up till one or two in the morning. Basically, this trade occurred on a Friday. And on the Thursday, I was uh, at my friend's place just looking at the market casually, you know, on my phone, just chilling out. And I was scouting it. So I don't know about you guys, but I have this tendency lately because I'm busy with my schedule and everything. But I tend to look at markets on the daily time frame and 15 minute lowest. And I just scout them out, right? So I'm looking for players in the daily time frame. I'm looking for market context to set up on the daily time frame and also the weekly and all that. So what I noticed about the Doge market is that on the daily chart, let's go over to the daily chart. Here, um, we had two big sell-off days after this uh, run-up of you know multiple green days in a row. So that created a new supply zone right there. And we also had this big tail, uh, meaning that it had already been tested and rejected. And basically on the third day, we were down here. So we have these daily demand zones here at 83.80, 83.50. And what I noticed on Thursday night, which was April 20th, 420 baby, that the market was chopping in that area and it was resisting from these daily zones. And that's also part of the context. So 
I was watching it, you know, going through the next day, and I did see it start to sell off a bit the next day here on the Friday. Um, and you can see that we're below these levels. And if you look very closely, you'll see pretty much a top tick of the higher end of the range. And then over here, you'll also see a top tick of the lower end of the range of the 8350s. And then the market proceeded to sell off. So what this created was more of a bearish bias on a daily time frame uh, market context idea. Okay, so we generally have a more of a bearish bias than a bullish bias, as long as we stay below these daily demand zones, which are now acting as supply zones, which are now resisting the market. So we started to see a bit of a sell off here. So I started watching the market probably around one o'clock when it was chopping around here. And the market sold off pretty aggressively. Now when I started looking for the trade was in this area right here. So after this initial big sell off here, I'm pretty much looking only short side. I'm not looking to buy this at all because of the big context and the daily time frame and all that. Um, so I was looking to short it and my initial entry, I was looking for a pullback in this area here because we were trading around these uh, 81 and 80s or so, 80 around there. And the first sort of standard deviation was around these 8260s, 8250s. And I would have been willing to risk up to 83s and maybe even a bit higher depending on how the trade would play out on the initial entry of the trade. One thing that's important in trading is you have to know your risk tolerance. So I was I borrowed about 40,000 or 42,000 Doge, which is relatively small. I'm trading for about 40 cents a tick, a little more. Okay, so here's when I started watching the market uh, as we had that initial sell off from those 83s down below 82s. Okay, so we had this big sell off, this rebound, and I was looking for a pullback basically all through this uh, area right here. And I would have liked it if it could have happened at the, around this time, around 1.30, but it actually took quite a long time for this market to chop. Um, and actually, I ended up pulling the order here as it bottom took the lower end of what I call my volatility range at the moment. And I ended up pulling the order out, but basically I had an order to sell my 40 whatever thousand doge around 82.50s. And I'll also show you that order right there. If you look at order history, you'll see at that time, the order was placed one o'clock and 37 minutes. I had that sell order there at 8250, 42,710 doge, and then I canceled it. It doesn't show the time of the cancel, unfortunately. That's just the way the platform works. So then um, you can see the trade was executed at that time, which was 305. So there was a lot of context that I was watching in this area. So as time played out, we went into two o'clock, we had a new supply zone form. And I'll show you what that supply zone looked like. So it's basically this. I'm going to try and simplify this, but basically we have a market that's trading lower. We have many bars in a row closing lower than the next. So at this moment here where we had the double top of that bar, that sort of marks an area of resistance for me at that point. And we also had another one right here. So we have this new sort of range that I'm watching right here. And this is sort of how I categorize supply demand areas. You can see that I'm using the high of this bar here as the market went and basically top ticked it or it, even if it broke it and rejected it, that would have still been that exact same price, 8201 um, of where I would have put the level. And then over here, the first time we had a close above the high of that bar, I also marked in a level right there at 8193. So we have this range here that is formed and also in the moment um, that this was happening, I had my volatility ranges up um, and the low of the volatility range was right around here at 81.30. And you can see that the market bottom ticked that. And what I said earlier is that when it bottom ticked that, that's when I decided to pull out my order, which was sitting around 82.50s. Um, because when the market bottom ticks a range, it changes the probabilities of what's gonna happen when it gets to the other side of the range. So what I was looking for is chop in here for a bit and then we see a rip up and I get short on a first pullback and that gives me sort of that entry that I'm looking for um, where we can get an edge basically sort of an initial rejection of a first pullback and that's kind of a bread and butter trade that I like to get but the thing is the market often doesn't present that opportunity so when it doesn't give you that the context is now changing and you have to adapt and potentially execute the trade in a different way so what happened is after it bottom tick there again, I pulled the order and as I was seeing this develop, what I realized is that I think that if we did get up to that 8250, 8260 area, I think that I wouldn't have wanted the trade anyways. So what I decided in this moment was once I saw it reject 8201 and then initiate a sell off from that area, 
I decided that I was going to execute the trade and then put my stop basically where my prior entry would have been at 8250, 8260s. Um, and that's pretty much the way I played it. So I entered the trade here around 81 and 30s, um, which would have pretty much been that uh, lower the volatility range that I was describing to you guys earlier. And that's pretty much where I executed the trade. So going over to the one minute chart, um, it would have been right over here. So you can see we had this big rip up to those above those 8200s and then starting to sell off. And then right here, if you look closely, wait, wait a minute, wait a minute. And then if you look very closely right before the sell off was initiated. And again, I wish I had this recorded on the tape, but you guys had to see this and you guys who, who trade and you, you know what I'm talking about here. But basically what we had right before the sell off was initiated was a huge fake out, like a huge liquidity pull right to that 8200 and, and an immediate rejection right from the level. And then it went and then it continued to go back down. And then I see the market proceeding down and it was going down very, very, very fast at this moment. So I said, OK, I think it has to be now or never. So I ended up just taking out my phone and putting in that order for whatever it was. I was looking at the offer. I jumped on the offer at 81 and 33 and I tried to get it and I did get the fill. Trading by hand is more of a risky approach, but because I have a longer term outlook on this trade, it's more of a position trade. You can afford to trade it by hand. It's not a big problem. But if you were trading anything in the lower time frame, like HFT style, my opinion is do not trade that by hand unless you have access to a DOM where you can click to get in and out of your orders very fast. That's a different thing, obviously. But what I mean is trading by hand is like putting orders on your phone, placing the stop after you enter the trade, all that stuff. You should never ever do that if you're doing a short term trade for position trades, it's acceptable. And I was looking for on this trade for about maybe two, 300 ticks. And that's what I thought what the, what the reward was. Unfortunately, I didn't get the actual screen recording, but what you will hear is the sound right there. So this is the sound coming from the recording. And I put the order on my phone, that sell offer. Um, and you're going to hear the sound when the order executes. That was it right there. You heard it? That's the sound that KuCoin makes when an order is filled. And you also saw it light up at the top of the screen there. You can put that back. So at that point, I was in the trade. My order had been filled uh, to sell that Dogecoin right at this exact moment right here. Okay. And it's going down. It's, it's trading at 80, 81 and 30. And... Then we fast forward it and uh, you can see that the PL number is is changing there and it shows you information about that and whatever. Um, so then the market is going down immediately. OK, and you can call that a lucky entry, I guess you could say, because I got in pretty much before it was before it dumped. Um, but then again, there was context working in the favor of it, but I still I'm still going to say it was a relatively lucky entry because I literally got in right before it dumped and as it was dumping. Um, so lucky entry. Then the market's selling off. We're trading at 79 now. So let's go back over to our daily chart and we're going to look at some of these levels. So Dogecoin daily chart. Uh, and again, this was um, this was on this day right here, the third day. Uh, so ignore all this chop after. Again, I, I stopped looking at it right after that trade anyways, but just so happens that we had four or five days of chop right after that. But this 7706 area was the area I was looking for. So the way I was perceiving this in the moment was judging on how fast it was selling off. Um, there's what I call an area of, uh, I call it sort of the the area where the money is in the market, the the area where the liquidity is, where the stops are, where it's likely where it could probably see a flush and a bounce and an area where the market might reject, might, you know, get traders in, get traders out and then immediately get the hell out of that area. That's what I call sort of like the money area, the money spot. And what I believe was the money spot was basically anything from 77s, in this 7950, sorry, 7850 to 77 area. So this was, in my opinion, what I called the money spot on the daily chart. So I was bidding in that area to get the hell out of the trade. So the market was flushing down and uh, I'm looking to get out in that area, right? I don't know if I'm going to get 77s and again, the market's flushing down and all that. What happened was it flushed down. Let's keep watching what happened. Uh, so you can see I uh, so if you look closely at the bottom there, you can see I had a bid in to buy 30,000 doge at 78 even. OK, and the market traded as low as 79. Now, keep in mind, as this is happening, guys, I'm watching the futures trade on Binance. So I'm trading on the KuCoin exchange, but I'm watching the futures on the Binance exchange on 
this, uh, this thing right here. Um, and the reason I'm watching that is because there's an extreme amount of volume going through on the futures market on Binance, way more than on KuCoin. The other thing was that the prices were slightly different. Now we're looking at 3.13 p.m. here. You can see the market had flushed down, traded as low as 78 and something. Um, and then we have this chop starting to form here. And then the market rallied and came back down. So we have a trading range. So basically, as soon as we rejected this 80 cent area, and I was totally aware of that, that was something I was watching for because we have a big even number, big 80 cent even number here. I definitely wanted to see what it was going to do if it got there. And because I'm short at 8130s, you know, I'm sitting pretty in this trade at this point. I don't really need to be rushing to get out, rushing to take profits. I'll just sit there and be patient and wait for the market to give me more information about my trade. And like I said, I believe the money is down here, more around these 78s down here. So I waited. So the market continues and we have this trading range here. And now this is where it was interesting. You can see it's starting to trade lower going into the close of the stock market, which would be 4 p.m. Eastern. And one thing that happened was my 33,000 share bid for Doge actually got filled on KuCoin before it even traded that price on the Binance futures. And that was kind of weird. So basically, you can see I put in a new buy limit right there at 78.50, uh, 32,000 Doge. And I may have canceled that one too. So let's keep going. And there we go. I canceled it and I placed a new one, 78.65. So I was getting a feel for, you know, roughly where that order needs to be placed. Obviously, you can't place it perfectly, but um, that's the way it works. So what happened was, again, this is the market playing out here now uh, on my main screen in front of me. So we'll just fast forward our way through that. And what you'll see is this. So take a look at this. Take a look here as the futures are trading at 79.10 um, on Binance futures. And um, okay, we have that flush. You saw that right there? And you heard the sound too. At that, in that instant, on that liquidity flush right there, my order on KuCoin at 78.65, which is way below here, was filled. My 32,000 share bid was filled right there on KuCoin on that flush, which is odd. So basically, what happened was there was a, a huge pull of liquidity that just triggered any stop. So all the bids on KuCoin pulled way lower than they did on the futures market here on Binance. I guess that's what you call an inefficiency between the exchanges on a crypto market. So then I went to look and I realized that the order was filled. The 32,000 share bid there was filled. And if you look, there's a tail there on KuCoin that obviously that tail is not there on the futures market on Binance. So we had an inefficiency between the two exchanges. And in this case, it benefited me by filling my 32,000 share bid. And I'm left now with about 10,000 or 11,000 of the position left. So that was about 75% of the trade taken off right there around the first target. Um, pretty much the first target. So then what I did after that was I put in a stop for the rest of the trade. And I believe I put it in at break even, which would have been 81 and 30. And then I put in a target. And the reason I did it this way is because for some reason, OCO orders are not supported with the isolated margin account on KuCoin, which is a weird issue because they have them on the futures account. They don't have them on the isolated margin account, which is which is weird and, and unprofessional, in my opinion. So I was just writing out how much I had to... Um, repay because obviously I borrowed the Dogecoin to short it. Um, so I bought back 32,000. Now the remainder that I have to buy back in the market is that much 10,710. So I'm writing that down. And then I put in the bid at 77. So unfortunately, we do not see the last order fill at 77. But if you look at the end of my video clip here, you can see that my bid there, I had a bid for 10,710 Doge. I know it's covered by the bar there. But that was a bid that I had remaining that I placed afterwards for the remainder of my trade. And I placed it at 77.10. And on this flush right here, it was filled. It was filled right here. And that was the close of my position right here. So we did have one final liquidation move right pretty much close to the close of the stock market on a Friday. And that's where my... Uh, the remainder of my trade was filled here at 77.10, all right? And then the market bounced and it uh, chopped after that. Okay, so that was the trade. And uh, after that, I paid back the loan uh, in the market there. See, I was tinkering around there with the uh, repay the loan bullshit. And then I had to go in and buy one extra Dogecoin or something. So, all right, guys, so I think I pretty much went over most of that with you. Um, 
And you can see that's kind of the support zone on the daily chart now for Doge, although I wouldn't count on it too much, but I do think that we are due for some more chopping in this area, um, maybe for a few more days. So that's the way I look at things, guys, for a swing trading perspective. I'm definitely not in a rush to get back involved in any market. Um, but what I will do is I will wait on the sidelines for setups like these to play out. I mean, to set up and then, um, you know, hit them with relatively decent size. And that's it. So thank you for watching. Hope you enjoyed this first trade review and I will see you guys in the next video. Take care. Click here if you want to see a cool new video and then click here to watch a playlist of videos like this. Thanks and I'll see you guys in the next one. Take care.